my soul a fire, O oh Lord, set my soul a fire, O oh Lord, make my life a witness of your power, fill me with your spirit every hour, set my soul a fire. Set my soul a fire, O oh Lord. Set my soul a fire, O oh Lord. Make my life a witness of Your power. Fill me with Your Spirit every hour. Set my soul a fire. Set my soul a fire, O oh Lord. Set my soul a fire, O oh Lord. Make my life a witness of your power. Fill me with your spirit every hour. Set my soul a fire. Welcome to the Liturgy of the Word. This is the Thursday, August 29th, 2024. It's the Memorial of the Passion of St. John the Baptist. My name is Sean O'Dowd, and it's so good to be with you all, all of you today. Uh, so let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that St. John the Baptist should go ahead of your son, both in his birth and in his death, grant that as he died a martyr for truth and justice, we too may fight hard for the confession of what you teach. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the first letter uh, of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in Christ, called to be holy with all these everywhere who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account, 
for the grace God bestowed upon you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Let all your faithful ones bless you. Bless you. Let all your faithful ones bless you. Bless you. Every day will I bless you. And I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Let all your Generation after generation praises your works and proclaims your might. They speak of the splendor of your glorious majesty and tell of your wonderful works. Let all your discourse of the power of your terrible deeds and declare your greatness. They publish the fame of your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your justice. Let all your reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Herod was the one who had John the Baptist arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet liked to listen to him. She had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. Herodias' own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. So she went outside to her mother and asked and said, What shall I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oath and the, and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. 
so he promptly dispatched the executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl, in turn, gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, whenever we read um, uh, passages like this, like in, in the, the Gospel of Mark, I'm always amazed at how one person, one person can have such an impact on another person's life. You know, we see this all the time in the Old Testament where these kings of Israel, they go and try to um, satisfy um, the non-Jewish people in, in, in Judah, in Israel, by building these uh, altars on high places to worship these foreign gods. And it wasn't until we saw uh, Hezekiah and Josiah come in and say, no, no, it's not to, to be like this. And so they broke down the, the, the temples on the, uh, the, the altars on these high places. And they said, we are supposed to worship only the God of Israel, God the Father. Um, and, and, and even in, this, uh, in Mark's gospel today, whenever we see um, Herodias harboring such anger, hatred, a grudge against John the Baptist for calling her out. And then we see uh, Herodias' daughter performing a dance in front of King Herod, and he was so delighted in her that he wanted to give her whatever. And I could just imagine this daughter, this, I'm not sure how old she was, but this young lady, filled with excitement. What should I ask for? Thinking to herself, boy, maybe gold, maybe silver, maybe precious stones, maybe land. I'm sure she could have a, a, a palace built for herself. But she went to somebody that she trusted. She went to her mother, to Herodias, and said, what should I ask for? And in that anger, in that hatred of John the Baptist, she told her daughter, ask for John's head on a platter. And I thought, well, what, what a shame, how sad that that hatred played out in taking John's life. And I wonder how that impact, that one decision, that impact from her mother uh, had on, on her daughter, not only in that instance of having uh, John's uh, head on a platter, but also what this meant for the rest of her life, how that impacted her. Um, and so, you know, you know, and I'll be the first to admit, you know, I'm, I'm a work in progress when it comes to faith. But my goal is to become like Jesus Christ each and every day. I mean, that's what I ask God in the, in the morning every time I wake up. I want to invite him so deeply into my heart, into my being, that I become more and more like Jesus Christ. But I also recognize that there's a responsibility to that, a responsibility of what kind of impact am I leaving? For instance, is my liturgy of the word, is it having an impact on you? Whenever I go out into the community, is my faith having an impact on people um, who don't know Jesus Christ? And what about my children? I mean, just like Herodias, is my life that is hopefully filled and reflective of that of Jesus Christ going to have a positive impact on my children? That's my goal. And whenever I die, whenever I step off of this, this earth, I want to be completely spent. I don't want to have any more faith. I don't want to have any more joy. I don't want to have any more love. I don't want to have any more peace because I've given it away. And I think that's what God is calling me to do. And I want to share a story with you of something that happened last month. Um, Chris and I take the kids to, uh, to Jupiter, Florida. My sister has a beach house down there. So we just go down there and hang out for a couple of weeks. And it's such a wonderful time to just do nothing, reconnect with the kids, um, do whatever they want to do and, and try to do that as a family, whether it's going to a movie or going out to eat. And, um, and so we, uh, we drive down. So it's a really long drive down to Jupiter, Florida. Um, so we drive from Johnstown to Charlotte to, um, to Jupiter. 
And along the way, we, we jump on Interstate um, 68, Interstate um, uh, 79, then 77. We stay over my brother-in-law's uh, place in Charlotte. And then we get up and take the next leg of the, the travel the, the following day. So we jump back on I-77, I-26 and I-95 until we get down to Jupiter. Um, so in order to get down to Charlotte, it's seven and a half hours. And this time from Charlotte to Jupiter, Florida, it took us 12 hours because of accidents, construction and things like that. So we spent a lot of time on, on the road in those last couple of days. But um, and we didn't have any kind of issues, no mechanical issues with the van. It worked well. Um, we, we had multiple stop offs along the way with rest stops and um, and gasoline brakes. Uh, and we just kept on going, we kept pushing through and got down there in two days. Um, the day we got down there, the, the next morning, Chris and I decided to go grocery shopping and, and, uh, and get some groceries for the next couple of days. So we ran out into the grocery store, got some groceries, came back. And, um, and then shortly after that, we tried to uh, go somewhere else and the van was dead. It just died. There was no clicking. I tried to jump it. There was no starting it whatsoever. The car was, the van was dead. <laughs> so, um, so I called a tow truck and they took it to a, a, a garage. But I, I made a point to, uh, for our evening prayers to, to mention this to the kids. I said, look, do you see God's guiding hand in getting us down to Jupiter, Florida? With all the rest stops, with all the gasoline stops, with uh, um, sitting in traffic. I said, um, did you see God's guiding hand in getting us down here safely? It's not luck, it's not haphazard, it's not coincidence, but it's the loving hand of God that brought us down here safely after two days of solid driving. Um, and then I got a call from the garage down there and uh, they gave me a quote of $3,400, it's what it's gonna cost to fix our van. I'm like, oh boy, I wasn't expecting this, but we need a van, we need to get home, certainly, and I don't feel like buying another van while I'm down there. So I, I said, go ahead, go ahead and fix it. Um, and they did. Uh, a couple days later, uh, I got my van back and then I started looking over my, my, um, my itemized bill that I received from that garage. And I'm looking at it and it's like, wow, who would ever pay $27 for one spark plug? And because it's a six cylinder van, I needed six of them. So I'm over $160 just in spark plugs. I'm like, wow. And as I was going over this and maybe saying this out loud, <laughs> my kids chimed in and they said, dad, we should be so lucky. We were blessed that um, we weren't stranded along the interstate somewhere. We weren't waiting for hours for a tow, tow truck to, to pick us up, that we didn't have to take it to a garage that we didn't know that we didn't have to stay in a hotel for a couple of days until this van was done. And that we didn't have to eat at restaurants day in and day out until the van was done. And I thought, how beautiful is that? That my kids recognize not only the, the loving and safety of God's hands taking us to Jupiter, Florida, but also importantly, recognizing that the fact that it, things could have get, gotten so much worse without God's presence in our life. And for me, my brothers and sisters, that is a priceless act of love, of knowing that my faith and Chris's faith are spilling over onto our kids. They recognize the good times whenever God is there, and even in the not so good times, how things could get so much worse whenever he's not there. So I have a question for you. And that question is, what kind of impact is your faith uh, having on the next generation? I wanted to thank you for tuning into the Liturgy of the Word today. God bless all of you. And until next time, peace.